recording in progress. I will call for the regular meeting of the Lyle Park District Board of Commissioners today, Thursday, October 17th at 7 p.m. Uh, Dan, can I get a roll? Oh. Yep. Commissioner Dombrowski. Here. Commissioner Tapella. Here. Commissioner Alpeter. Here. Commissioner Hummel. Here. President Wessel. Here. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next up is presentations. We do not have any. Uh, next is public comment. Uh, visitors are welcome to address the board of commissioners. You are asked to raise your hand, which you recognize by the board president. <laughs> when recognized, please move to the lectern, speak to the microphone, and state your name, address, and the item you wish to discuss. It is requested that one spokesperson for a group be appointed to present the views of the entire group rather than having multiple individuals repeat similar opinions. There will be a five minute time limit per speaker. Do I have any public comment? Okay. Hello, I'm, uh, my name is Noah 551, Colorado Mind Traveler Lion. Um, so I just wanted to address a public comment that was at the last board meeting regarding term limits. I don't want this board to entertain a policy for term limits. I don't know if you guys have discussed it anymore. Um, but I just wanted to point out we do have elections to control the terms that people serve. And the reality is this district has greatly benefited from board members serving unlimited terms. It is because of past board members and their long-term vision and dedication that there are 40 parks, multiple facilities, countless programs and events. It's pretty amazing what this district's board and staff can do when they're working together. I also wanted to encourage anyone running for this board to make sure that your heart is in the right place. The purpose of having a seat is to represent the community not your individual opinion or self-interest. Make sure you are running to support the vision and mission of this district, which includes the master plan that the residents themselves were surveyed for. Thank you, that's all. Thank you. Do I have any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, I will want to entertain a motion to approve the meeting agenda. I enter, I Move to approve the meeting agenda submitted for Thursday, October 17th, 2024. Okay. Second. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion passes. I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items, inclusive of the October 2024 voucher list of $315,354.08. So moved. Second. Dan, can I get a roll call vote? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Alt-Peter? Aye. Commissioner Hummel? Aye. Commissioner Dombrowski? Aye. Commissioner Tapella? President Wessel? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Uh, communications there are none. Unfinished, unfinished business there is none. Uh, in business, we have a 2025 budget draft discussion. <clears throat> no. Okay. Okay. Well, with that, I will. Danny submitted the budget to us. Is there anything you would like to say first? I don't think so. Other than that, the uh, budget preview memo was included in the packet. Um, I know that Commissioner Hummel had a, a handful of questions this afternoon that staff provided answers to. I don't know. I'm assuming. I don't know that everyone's had a chance to review that, but. Staff is here to field any questions that the board might have. Um, the only one I had, and I think actually Commissioner Hummel has the same one. I try to find the numbers in front of me. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think this is the right one. But the budget of revenue was going to increase twenty four thousand dollars, even though we missed this year's target. Like we feel fine that we're going to be able to do that through fees or. Yep, yeah, Superintendent Pratchett, would you mind fielding that one? Yeah, you're correct. We've had fee increases across a lot of service areas, specifically within camps, uh, admission and membership fees for Key Lime and Water Park. And here and there, we've kind of gone through the budgeting process this year. So altogether, that revenue increase, we are confident in, but not necessarily based on 
new participation. It's just increasing fees to be more in line with our competitors and just uh, make up for the you know the high quality and the lead set demand that's coming our way. And then my only that's the only one that I do, and I probably was the uh, I never had fun. It's, I got tripped up on this last year, but probably for my own. <laughs> I, I saw the zero dollar level, so we're still contributing on order like 100%, but we're not over contributing, right? Right. They're, they're, yes. Okay. We're meeting the employer obligation. Sure. Uh, the only a couple of things that I put in the email too is if we could try to expedite the uh, community park shelter project as much as we can in 2025, even if you can. I don't know how the cost would be on the project, but like if you have to not include like, the shoreline erosion portion or uh, the path or the connecting path, all of that might be kind of hard, but mm -hmm. I, I think that. I don't know how to be able to do this. That's one thing. Sure. I don't, again, I don't know if you'd seen the response, but staff's response was we'd be happy to expedite it to the extent we can. That We might run into some challenges because it's community park and the entire park is the floodplain. Um, with the exception of the little peninsula where the shelter sits now, that's actually out of the floodplain, but expanding its footprint is going to result in some complicated engineering but nothing that we haven't been through before or the engineer that we've we, we want to work with on this project has been done before so we'd be we can move as as swiftly through that process as the board wants and as our engineers and architect can provide yeah i mean yeah no no way. But it could be ready for camps. Possibly. I mean, if, if we can time it where it can, if, if we're able to get it that quickly, potentially start construction in the fall and over the winter, depending on availability of the shelter that's selected. I mean, we can we can certainly give it a shot. Would it be then? Are, are you looking at like an uh, uh, extension or like not going to completely rebuild but just expanding? I, I, that's what we want to try to identify. Um, we we have a proposal from or waiting on a proposal from Hitchcock Design Group. They're a new landscape architect group we haven't worked with before, but has a great reputation in the field. Uh, and they're out of Naperville. Um, that's part of the part of the due diligence. Is what would it take? Would it be more practical to just knock it down and build something? I know that the the toilet facilities in the existing building are very very outdated. Um, they're concrete walls, floors, um, pretty rough. So, and the demand that those are getting far exceeds what their ability to service. So more than likely it would probably be a new brand new shelter, but to the extent in staff's opinion, anyway, to the extent we can get it to, to somewhat mimic the architecture of the other shelters on site, I think would be, would be beneficial, but it would be, a, it'd be quite a bit large. And, and I don't know how familiar you, you all are with the shelter at Wood Glen Park, but our, our vision is something along those lines, probably bigger still than that, but with um, bathroom facilities and, and possibly even a little storage shed or garage in which to store some of the supply, camp supplies that have to otherwise be carted in and out every day. Um, I don't know if this is just like some food for thought, but um, in design, you know, going forward because the problems we've had um, at our concert series of people getting up on there, you know, maybe, maybe no. When you're looking at a design, you know, if it's between two, is it one that's not climbable or? Yeah, I, I so it is funny. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. All, no, it's like those things like, to keep birds off. Yeah, I'm saying those for sure. The way the design is now with the drop down of that wall there, it lends itself to like haul yourself up there and then get on the roof. Where it was it just a straight shut up? You probably couldn't do that. You can't climb a wall. Yeah, we certainly take that into consideration. That's a very good point. It's such a safety thing that really bothered me last summer. Like it's, yeah. you know, it's more than just being up there and disrespect. Oh, yeah. It's also a giant safety concern, yeah. which then I mean, it turns into a bigger problem for us. Right. Nope. No, great idea. Um, the other thing is within the evening exam, too, and I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but um, again, I'm a fool. I know like it's funded for like two hundred thousand dollars in losses. And I, I mean I know it's gonna lose money. It's just the nature of the piece, especially now that it's 
a shorter season than it has been. But it might stay up and that okay every quarter wants to do it. Like there could be like some type of plan to see how to reduce some of those losses if possible. I mean, it's gonna lose money. I, right. I understand that it's gonna lose money. But if there's a way to kind of cut back some of those losses, because that's a lot of money. Oh, it is, and that no doubt, and it's not going, it's it's trending in the, the wrong direction too. And a lot of it it's so labor intense staffing a facility like that and with the unfunded mandates of increasing minimum wage keep coming our way it's just and superintendent pratchett you can chime in or maybe provide more information but unless we want to cut staffing but if we're going to reduce staffing then you've got to close portions of the of the facility because by code you have to have lifeguards at these open bodies of water so i'll turn it over to john because that's you're more the professional and, and Sarah Mexicano in the, in the audience too, has a lot of experience too. I mean, the only other thing I would add is that we're talking about a plan to reduce expenses. I think at this point, it's really about limiting our hours of operation or not having certain amenities open or even certain programs that we've had customarily. So, um, you know, the concept of open later or close a little bit earlier, stuff like that is ways you could trim the cost. But in general, we're forced to budget as if we're opening and operating fully every single day. But in reality, we closely monitor the attendance. We look at the weather and whenever we can trim or cut something or have one person at a station as opposed to two, you know, once we get past the busier times of the day, we're, we're always looking to try to trim costs. We do recognize the, the, the total cost is pretty high with everything going every single day, but just the hourly cost of having the staff that we do and what it takes to operate safely and according to all of our guidelines it's it's a tough challenge and it also comes with the challenge that when you start shutting things yeah. down then you do have patrons complaining i mean even just from the social media feeds i see <laughs> when i see that you've shut the pool down they'll say what the heck we showed up we couldn't go down the sides that's the only thing we wanted to do why and so i mean they're that's one thing we've talked about is just making sure we're doing a great job of promoting what we have, especially as we get new um, equipment or new amenities that we can draw a, a larger audience, but um, that's something that normally we're just trying to see if we can continue to have a larger demand of actual people coming into our facility help offset some of the expenses and just draw attention to all the good things we have going on. I have a comment real quick. I just remember too, regardless when we shut down pools or whatever, we have electric water pumps and liquid run at 24 7, 365. So those are fixed costs. And this year, chemicals cost us more than they ever had in the past. Price of chlorine went through the roof. It was, it was really kind of nutty. So again, even when you're cutting staff, you still got all the utilities that the thing is running. So there's not really a way to save on that because you can't shut a pool down for the night to have it up for the next day. So the fixed cost there is some of that is, is, uh, is part of the problem. And from what I understand, the last couple of years, we haven't even been at full staff capacity. I mean, we're still, did we recruit all the lifeguards and everything that we wanted to in years past? It's been a challenge, but this past year, we did pretty good finally getting enough staff to be about where we want to be. We're still lower than, you know, call it five years ago, where it was a lot easier to pay people and they wanted to work with me. A lot of people just be very busy with other, you know, extracurricular activities or just not wanting to work 40 hours a week or even 25 hours a week for that matter. So, Trying to balance that type of change in things, but um, it is it is hard, and especially being able to compete with other uh, organizations or businesses that can pay higher rates. We we have to obviously be mindful of our budget, but they can go with a lot less responsibility, a lot less required training, and they can make just as much the same money as they could, you know, here. So, oh. Here, any other budget comments? I have one more, but I, I mean, I, I get with you guys. I mean, I, I, I get it. I mean, I know it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna lose a lot, especially if the trend is going in the wrong direction. I mean, that could be a, it could be a, if it's not a problem today where we could absorb that. I mean, if it goes up to 250,000 or more in the future, at some point, the, it could be a problem that it starts. You have to start, you know, subsidizing the pool to get the uh, cost of something outside. Sure. I mean, that's all I'm saying is, I know it's not an easy answer or an easy price, right. but it, I don't, and I don't have the answer I guess too. But no, it's just something. But I think it's. I think of all the facilities and operations that we have, 
I would like to think that that's one that the community generally doesn't mind subsidizing. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not a free pass and that we can rest on our laurels and just say, oh, but I, I certainly wouldn't recommend or even whisper that we would consider closing it or, or oh, no. doing anything because yeah, it's I, requires yeah. too much. And it's, you know, and we discuss this internally and it's obviously we know this too life safety, you know, to teach, to have learned to swim programs in this community is, is vitally important, especially with the amount of ponds and open water that we have all over the, the district. I mean, that's, that's another advantage too, but no, you're right. I mean, it's certainly a challenge and it's not getting any easier. But all the more reason, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but all the more reason maybe to try to wring out as much revenue from other areas that can handle subsidizing something like the aquatic park to, to a certain degree. And just be mindful in the future for different renovations or different things coming up with a design where it maybe isn't as labor intensive of what amenities we're putting into the, the park itself. And then the last thing which was also an email about I have mean, stated my concern with some of the staffing um, uh, positions or the bring back some positions. So um, I don't know. I, I, I guess what I, I, it's up to the board if they want to see it, but I wouldn't mind seeing like a head, head count history by the department uh, just just to see like where, where we are with staffing levels in certain departments. It's, and we were historically. I don't know. Maybe it's up to the board if they want to see that. Because I, 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 if we're going to hire a golf manager, and I know it was what, like 15 years since we've had one, I don't know if then do we need a full time senior accountant or if we get a part time accountant? Then? Because the, the position was split, if I recall, between the finance department and the golf department. So, and even some of the other part time positions that were documented in the budget that seemed like they so. Okay. Well, uh, so I mean, I guess we were talking about that. I guess that we're charged with Dan is who we review. Our staff um, is given a budget. We approve the budget or we don't approve the budget. We don't traditionally approve all, you know, like all the positions or what goes into staffing in those areas because they know what they need to fulfill requirements for what they're charged with doing. So I don't know that the minutia of getting into what's the park line people, I think that's really kind of overstepping what we're here to drive. That's just my opinion. I uh I get both arguments to be totally honest. Uh, I do think though part of the reason why we're at this table is for this oversight. Not that anyone's mishandling anything or anything of that nature, but kind of sometimes we're going to have to have hard discussions. Like the aquatic center, I think is a perfect example of that. That's one that I think that almost every person in Lyle would be willing to subsidize. I know I would be, but if there's ways that we can, we have certain things that are just becoming a giant hole uh, for money and uh, with staffing and overhead and everything else. And yeah, we should be taking hard looks at maybe getting rid of some things that really aren't a benefit to the majority of the community. So that way we can make sure that the things that are a big benefit to the community, we sell without it, you know, driving costs up. So I kind of get both arguments, but I would like to see, I would kind of like to see that as well. And just, and it's not cause like, I, I'm not trying to count every dollar that someone spends, but just to get an idea, like, how much staff we have for certain things and then how much revenue is actually being generated for it. Like, do we have the headcounts to keep a program going? You know, these are all things that I think most taxpayers in a lot would like to know. I can tell you we've had at COVID, I think we were at 40 full-time employees and right now we've got 32. I was say, I think, I, I, and we've restructured the, the, yeah, the yeah, department. I think it's actually a good thing to show that, right? We can show that during COVID, right? That we did. Right. And we're rebuilding and just yeah. putting, trying to put, and even that marketing position that, you know, that there's an issue with, that was a full time position up until COVID. And that was eliminated. It was it, the person resigned and we never replaced it. And now we've tried a couple of different approaches with interns and, and, part-time photographers and it's it's difficult to recruit it's difficult to keep somebody because the hours aren't enough 
but to structure it somehow the way that staff has it identified is is going to be a payback you know same with the golf course i don't i i mean we were fortunate to have an employee over there who was there as long as deb was and who became as familiar with that operation as she did because she was over there but to tr to try to replicate that one would be very difficult and i don't think in my opinion that's not the right answer that's that's become our largest revenue source and to not have a, a full-time employee designated to it with that's got specific experience in it that's where I just don't I don't understand why that would be the preferred approach. We're not looking to hire a, a, pro, a golf professional, which we had had. We had two professionals at one point over there. We're looking for a, a position that's comparable to a, rec, a recreation program manager. But for golf courses. For golf courses. I actually think that the, the golf is the one thing that's in the black, especially if, uh, it's been a good trend. So that's like one thing that I wouldn't want to mess with. You, know, you, you right. don't you understand like, Oh, I, yeah. yeah, I'm sure we're on the same page. It's in other words, like, and even to put a golf pro on, as long as you can justify uh, putting a golf pro on, you know, even part-time or full-time, as long as he's generating his own revenue stream, you know, instead of maybe making a village position, maybe it's a, a contracted 1099 position where mm -hmm. they get to eat what they hunt, you know, as far as their, their sales. Well, I mean, yeah. legitimately, I mean, basically you're, you're, you're basically supplying them an avenue in which to generate their own revenue stream. Well, we, the thing with the pro, we outsource the, the lessons. That's something that we used to teach in house, and you really want a, a, a certified PGA professional doing it. We outsource that, so that's one that we found actually beneficial to outsource. You know, so we do we do kind of weigh what what we can. And the question is, outsource the op, that that whole operation, and yes, you can do that. And we looked we looked at that a couple of times over the years, but they're going to take they're going to take what they're making, and oh, yeah. they're going to leave us with less. So we're really just giving money away. But again, I think that's one thing that I've said in the past that I think we've laughed out there is having a real face. Of, and I know that was great, all that, but well, in some ways, yes, and others, not so much. She wasn't um, on the course um, when we had opening days. We have not only Bennett, but we have um, Lyle. Um, you know, on opening days, to have a point person out there who's communicating with our schools um, to say, you know, hey, it's opening day, it's first tee. Um, hey, we're closing the course today. You know, we have those communications. Call Braidwood and say, hey, please don't drive up here because our course is closed. It's raining. And I think that it's very important to have a golf course manager whose job is the day to day activity and running it and, you know, is accountable for, you know, the revenue source out there and working to get golf outings and those kinds of things out to the course. I mean, I just think it is like, our, I mean, it's its own entity. <laughs> We've been trying with we the. Were lucky before that I think so. We we're in something, but that's yeah. Norm and nor should it be everything. No, but I, we have relied on the part-time staff over there, and they've they've been doing all right. But as you saw last month, and as we've been seeing more and more now that 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 position is vacant, and and a few of us are spending more time, and that we're seeing a lot of opportunities for improvement, and that's to put it mildly, and it's not to shortchange this, the staff that's over there, but without a. a on-site presence by a full-time position that's got the, you know, the know how to do it and the support from the rest of the team. And I think tying it into to John and Sarah's department in recreation and marketing, the, like I said, the collaboration and the energy the communication and the marketing, everything is going to be seamless because it's proven to be the case with bringing the, the recreation or the marketing team in under John's department. The communication has been knock on wood virtually seamless. And Riverbend has always been an island, much as we've tried to. But a lot of that is because, no offense, Scott, but it's, it's run been run by accountants. And, and they certainly have their skills and talents, but, you know, but that's not the, in passion, but that you need a balanced approach. And that I think we've been, I don't want to say shortchanged, but we took advantage of the opportunity to reduce spending during COVID and during all these times. And now it's, we lost that body of knowledge when Deb resigned or retired. And I think it's in staff's opinion, it's time to restructure it where the way most golf courses are structured. And even to a lesser degree, because again, we're not looking for a PGA, a certified professional to, to fill that role. Of course, I just hate to talk numbers. So I'm going to, I'm going to follow that up. So I think that for the most part, as long as you can justify uh, the course, putting on 
another additional set, then like no one's gonna no one's gonna fight you like that. But I do think that one of the points that Tom brought up is that you know having a head count of a breakdown of how many people are doing in what and Scott, you do a fantastic job of looking at the budget numbers and you break it down by like literally from the front page. I that was I noticed all the different cost codes and I'd love to get a breakdown so I know what each number means, but mm -hmm. but some of what Tom was talking to is something that like I think would be beneficial for everyone. Like, do we have a headcount of how many people are being not only are working in that department per you know, that cost code section in the park district, but then you know, and you have total revenue down here at the, the bottom usually in every department, but there's a lot of subsets within that mm -hmm. department. So it would be a, it would be better for me to know and, and not to sound convoluted in this, but like. I know we don't have this, but if we have basket weaving and we're paying someone to teach basket weaving and we only have two people that sign up a year to basket weave, then that would be something that we should get rid of. And that that is kind of some of the things that I think we're looking at, where, where a lot of things that are more popular, the golf course, uh, the aquatic park, those are things that even if we're not generating or running or functioning in the black, those are things that obviously the population and the taxpayers are going to want to subsidize because it is a huge benefit, you know? And so can we get that, Scott? Jason, every rec program is its own BNLs. Okay. So if you want to know about basket weaving and it has a code, we can tell you exactly the expenses and revenue tied to that program. So yeah, we run each program that way. So okay. that's why you have the class code, right? because that four digits tells you what the program is, and then we run all the expenses. This is a revenue. So you don't see that on here as per right. Class. He's, this but, is a summary of department, right? Yeah, but we can give you if you want to pick a class and pick soccer, we can run the PL in 30 seconds and tell you exactly what we've done here today. Could you do one on the budget? Like I know it's gonna be but like what five program times. are you picking? Well, I, and this is kind of where we're we're looking for you know feedback from both Dan and you is that. Are there things that you think that are uh, things that we can cut, make cutbacks in order to save money, or are, you know things that are unpopular that aren't being utilized that are costing us a bit of them? Yeah, that's part of the budget process. But I also would, I, if one of you guys want to speak to the fact that you, I, I know you weren't on the board then when we did the cost recovery, um, when we went through that as a district where that initiated the process that's now in place within the district that talks about constantly looking at those programs and removing them. That's what John's whole staff is doing, John does. They're constantly looking at those. They're looking at the revenue source. They're looking at um, how many people are registering for those programs. They're looking for ways to cost cut. When John goes to do the budget, I, you might want to speak to this because this was a process that we spent money on as a district and we implemented. And it's worked um, phenomenal. So, I mean, it's an ongoing process. So, I don't think without you knowing how the process works to know that that's already being implemented in the budget that we have in front of us. Is that fair? Yeah, I think, I John, would you be willing to yeah, just. That's, fair. Yeah, that's definitely fair. Because that was a process that was initiated by what we went through. Yeah, cost recovery standards are one thing. We also have kind of your point identifying the, the life cycle of programs and services. How popular are they? Are they growing? Have they kind of plateaued? And we make those decisions throughout the year as we evaluate things seasonally, but certainly during the budget process, we're looking at things closely to see what we can trim, what we can grow into new offerings and, and kind of replace stuff if we do get rid of other services. So. It's all part of the, the process and happy to work towards providing the details the board's looking for. Is it, but it's already implemented. So I mean, I guess. Yeah, and, and it's great that it's already implemented, and, and that's fantastic. But the whole point of this board is for oversight. So, I mean, I, I love the summaries, but I would also like to see the actual process. I mean, and that's, you know, not that I don't trust what you're doing or trust what anyone's doing, but the whole point is, is that if if all we're up here to do is to say, you guys are doing a great job, yay, then there's no reason to have a board. The whole point of a board is to have oversight. Jason, if you yes. wanted to come in and sit with me, okay, yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly. going line by line over any line that you want to go over in great detail because we have the numbers. Okay. Not only do we have the numbers, we have the history. So when we talk about history, we can go back three, four, or five years that program is run and show you what that program has done. So, and I know we specifically between John and I and Dan, 
we look at programs and we decide, is it gonna lose and are we okay with it losing money? Because not every program makes money. There are oh, yeah. some programs designed like the pool. We try to make money, but it's gonna lose money. Like Tom said, we know that it's by design. We're just trying to minimize that. We do that with every program. I mean, so it's nothing new that you're asking. We constantly go with this and, and John gets drilled. Is, is there a way we can cut costs? And he goes over it three times. I put three times with each of uh, program manager about every program they had and went over the numbers. So we can show you anything you want to see at, you know, whenever you want to come in. Please feel free. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, keep us moving on the budget. Step any other comments? If not, um, Dan, I think what I heard was at least it would be nice if we at least had a maybe like a 2019 versus 2024 comparison of headcount for the department. It's fine. Um, any I mean, other? I, I, my only thing would be we've restructured so much since yeah, 2019. I, I, I we're not even the same. I understand. It's not yeah. happening. Yeah. 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 the best way we can do it. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe full time and part time staff. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just, I, I I'm think we can do that part from part time. We yeah. don't have. You know, like whatever store matters. Like, well, but the, admittedly, three or four of those positions were the restaurant, right? So that that's gone. So that's not apples to apples. So we're, well, yeah, we can produce a headcount yeah, from twenty. Yeah. If it's not as much to add to it, then I might say, can you hear me? No. <laughs> if you're talking, yeah, that would be good. In order to make it effective, we need the commentary to go in because the stuff that you're telling us right now is what makes having that data important, yeah. right? Like it's one thing to, to see numbers, but the commentary behind it of like what you know, yes, we may have lost a position here and gained two positions here, but here's why we did it, and here's what the benefit that we've seen as a result. I think that's what's really going to give us the color. Behind sure. It. Yep, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Any other conversation on budget? So can I just say, so moving forward, we'll, this will be presented again next month. The one change I know we've got to make is the, I said in the report, there's a $5,000 allocation for the picnic shelter work. That's going to go up to probably closer to 12 um, because of, I, I had a more in-depth conversation with the landscape architect and they're going to get getting me a proposal, hopefully by tomorrow, but that allocation is going to go up just a little, well, Go up to about fifteen thousand, so that'll be incorporated. That'll be changed in the next budget. And I don't know that there's any other changes that we've seen since we presented this. Did uh, what was the causation? Misunderstanding on my part. Uh -oh. I had a conversation. Well, yeah, I was having a conversation with our civil engineer because I didn't want to. I'd rather for something like that. I'd rather serve somewhat as a general contractor, not just have an architect and mark up an engineer. So I, my wires were crossed with the two of them. But I caught it before we signed anything. So that's good. Okay, uh, moving on then. I, I think I still have the old agenda. I think at this point we added a, we had a B here for a policy discussion. It was actually, it was put under, yeah, it was put under commissioner reports, but if you wanted to. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, all right, so staff reports. Uh, the indoor rec space feasibility study uh, discussion. Dan, do you want to kick off any comments? Or um, I, it's presented for your comments. I, I made a couple of changes that I think I highlighted on the cover memo. Um, I did spend considerable amount of time uh, at the National Park Conference last week or the week before, whenever that was. Um, speaking with as many consultants as I can, some architects that are, that are on the national level, not uh, not the Illinois ones. And so I'm trying to garner some interest. I think we've got some good, good uh, some good interest going. So I think if and when we issue this thing, I'm confident we're gonna have a handful at least of, of parties participate. I'll just reiterate again, I think that this is essential that we need to make sure that we are Providing taxpayers is what they've told us that we need, and I think that this is going to be an important first step to gauging the community support for the, any project that we need to go forward. So the only, well, it, it like the memo says at the end, we just would like some um, direction on any other modifications, the timing of when it wants to be issued, and then the makeup of the selection committee. 
I know Commissioner Hummel had some opinions that I hadn't heard from any anyone else, so that, that's something I'd like to have some direction on at least. Well, you guys want to take it item by item? So further modifications? I had none. Um, the only thing is on the read from my comments from uh, last month, I know you uh, tweaked it with the, um, we have a paragraph about describing how the project team will prevent bias in their collective approach. <clears throat> I, I still, I read their hand in when there's a segregation of duties where they're not, whoever does this isn't going to be, wouldn't be eligible to work on a potential project because I still think there's an inherent bias. I mean, they could write a great answer of how they're impartial and stuff, but I don't think I, I, I guess when, when you say that, I'm not sure that you understand the process and how it would work. If, a, if an architect is the lead, then yeah, it's quite likely. But when I was been talking to locals and the national ones the last few weeks is you get the consulting group to lead the whole project. And if and when they need an architect to provide any design rendering or some cost estimates, that's when they're brought on. And I also believe strongly that with the, the amount of oversight that the board's going to have, especially that you would want to have in this thing, I find it hard to believe that anything's going to be presented or asked to the community that doesn't at least have the consent of the majority of the board. Um, and it's not the it's not the board leading this project. It's not it's not even staff. It's not even the architect or the consultant. It's the community. So our our collective role is to just make sure that the community knows about it and that they're participating. But I think if you're gonna, if you want to do what you do, what what you're suggesting, you're, we're gonna turn off people right out of the gate, because it this like it or not, and I say this to everybody, this is this industry is about relationships. It's not about being one and done and just moving on to the next, you know, to the next job in a lot of cases. But again, if you if if you want to DQ somebody before they even start, but we want to cast a real wide net, I think we've got to pick one way or the other. And I think I think we'd be selling ourselves short and selling some consulting teams short if we don't ask them right up, how are you going to prevent bias? Because we can say that on anything. How do you prevent bias? I think that I, my answer is we're going to be watching you. You know, they're not going to be doing this in a vacuum. I, I agree with staff's recommendation. Yeah, I mean, my, my standpoint is I want I, I'll answer the third part of these things with the uh, the committee or the, the makeup of the selection committee. With I, I think we should probably all, I think we probably all want to be part of it a little bit. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. I would like to be part of it. Like, so that, that is how <laughs> I guess I put words in your mouth. Uh, I would like to be part of it. Sound like you would like to be part of it. Um, and that's how we yeah. prevent bias, right? Like we have, yeah. Jason, as you said earlier, right? Board oversight. We are part of the committee. And that's part of the due diligence that the committee should be required to do, right? Is whatever they choose from a selection and it's still is part of their evaluation. And so it still would be ultimately the board would vote, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. For I'm sure. We went with the selection yep. would, committee would make a recommendation, the board would review the recommendation, and then. Yeah. But if the board, again, if so the board wants to. would be comprised of staff members and what, two or three board, two board members, because if you have three, they get posted as an open meeting. Well, I think that's what we have to talk. Oh, so. It should either be two or five, probably, right? So you, you, if you yeah. two were all, right, it would be all of us or, well, it could be three, but it, then you still have to post it. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, nope, that's, that's I could go either way. It doesn't matter to me. If we can go either way, I'd recommend having everyone involved in it then. That would be my recommendation, but I can't <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we could do it in whoever's event because I imagine it could be difficult if we're going to, for example, if we issue this thing next week, for example, trying to schedule meetings with the five of you and, and a handful of us plus a consultant to do interviews in the end of November in the, I mean, that's, that's setting a pretty high. Still, so we have to make the agreement then that we go forward even if somebody couldn't make it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh yeah. 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 I would. I'm just gonna interject just a second here. So I, I'm less concerned with uh, meeting the people that we're gonna have to do the consulting. Is that I am more concerned with making sure that the bids are aligned. And so I would think that it would be easy to make, for us to put in for a feasibility feasibility study, 
Uh, and in a lot of other park districts do this, Barrington does this, a lot of often often estates, ton of people is uh even for a feasibility study, what they'll do is they'll bring in three to five different consulting firms who are we're gonna use architecture, whatever. And you have a blind bid, bids come in at the next month's meeting, you open the bids there and everyone gets to see what you know what they're bidding and who they are. I think the big openings are public anyways, correct? Yep. Okay, so that is not really like anything. Right, and that's separate, separate from this process. I, yeah, I, I I believe you. I've never heard of that before, though. Really? No, no right, uh, yeah. So it's, uh, <clears throat> a lot of times it's done during during the, the day, like for the introduction part of mm -hmm. the proposal, right? So request for bids, everyone comes in, gets the same look at the plan, same with feasibility studies. And then uh, they'll be sent in, it's all blind, sealed envelopes, and then they pick a date and then they open them all up and then they all look at them. And, I think so, we could talk about that. I mean, for right now, though, this is not the process that we're doing. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Well, yeah. So let's just, we, I want to just get, make sure that we have consensus on this before. Well, we, but if that's part of the board. Yeah. But, but like part of what I'm saying is, is that I think we need that same process kind of here. Like I don't want two feasibility studies from just two different consultants, both which have partners in construction and possibility of biases there. I would like to make sure that we really get anywhere from a minimum of three to about five. Well, here, my my vision of how this would work is we would schedule a bid opening like we typically do um, during the day, and if if we'd rather do that at a board meeting, just want to. Okay, no, just well, no, keeping the night. No, during the day, but then we what we can do is we can provide then staff can provide copies of all these all the submittals to the board. Mm -hmm. You can review them at your leisure, your convenience. Then we can meet as a group. We can discuss all right who are the top three or who are the top two or who's the one that you want to interview or if there's two or three. We decide that, then we schedule an interview and a, another, I'm assuming a board meeting, but it's going to be the committee of the whole. Much like they did when, when they opened, when we did the, um, the, the restaurant. restaurant. The restaurant. Yeah, because I don't know that you want to deliberate. I mean, you don't want to go through well, everything. Okay. But... With our yeah, so that, that's, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Right, that's how we did that. Yeah, as soon as they're open, we will provide everything to, to all five of you. And then we can set a date for when do we want to get to get when does the board want to meet to actually deliberate on which ones you want to consider bringing in for an interview. Yeah. yeah. You said on the restaurant one to interview. I was going to say the restaurant one. I'll come in. I'm like, yeah. Just a quick picture was a quite kind of somewhat related to this, but I don't know the answer is it's just out of curiosity. Like, not just this, but usually you guys get RFPs. Are they hand delivered or are they mailed? Usually, uh, for any RFP you guys get, is it do we do we email them now, or they're they, they, they the yeah? Are they oh, they things? they yeah, they're hard copies, they bring they usually hand deliver or they come in the mail. Yes, they? yep, they're court, like FedEx, they're dropped off the day of, um, they're mailed, and, and we and get them. Received that or postmark, I think you have it, it's got to be received, it's not postmark, right? Right, okay. yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times the contractor will bring it in and they'll attend the bid opening. So they'll show up at five to 10 so they can. So, yeah, I'm sure they have renovations. Or... Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Because they would usually want to walk the premises and check it out. And get yeah. The land. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to change it. I'm just no, saying that I get it. typically the, uh, the, the, the blind bid comes in and then like you share the, the board. Right. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's more than just like, oh, yeah, this is what we got. Like, here are the bids. You know? For the professional right. services, yes. Right. Yeah. For construction jobs, no. But for something like this, yeah, you would. And obviously, you made it clear you want everyone wants to be a part of it. So we'll get you everything. We'll send you everything the day of the, of the bid opening or up the when they're due. And we'll right. schedule a meeting after that. All right. So keeping us on track here, I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, so modification, I think I heard the majority of the board here is fine with that. Right. I agree. So, yes. Jerry, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, basis, uh, so let, I'll skip number two for a second. Part three was the selection committee. Do we want all five of us part of this committee? Yes, I think we yeah. I mean, yeah. have to do that if possible. Okay, yeah, yeah. so that's the end all five yeah. of us. Okay. As possible. Yeah. All right, then back to number two, the timing. Um, how 
where are we looking at? I think as soon as possible. In order for us to effectively be able to coordinate the whole board, the quicker we can get this out, I think the better. Okay. I would second that. Yeah. Okay. I can get it. I can get it out next week. I also think it's timely now because people actually have time. <laughs> Their projects wrapping up in the summer. I was yeah. Who are those people? Yeah. Well, and I've recently spoken to a dozen or more so groups. Yeah. Especially if you stop them all. That's why I'm saying things strike on the iron side. Yeah, we have the momentum going, so don't all right. let's not delay. Is that enough? I don't know like how these are PV really go for on the vendor side. Or is that enough for the wrong for them to go? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I'll but I we can extend it too, where you by, by code, I think we're only required to have seven days or 10 days between when it's announced and when you have the open, when it's bids are due. But I, we, I, my head, we extend this maybe another week or two to give opportunities for people to get a team together and give them a full 30 days. Possibly. Yeah. 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 My only, I'm sorry. My only concern is with the holidays yeah. and just the time. But if we get them, I understand, but if we yeah. get the proposals then, and if it's, if it's the middle of November and no one can do, well, at least you have them when we can. Right discern okay. which ones rise to the top and hit it hard people's minds because you did such a great job going around the conference and yeah i, I blew you off a few up. times sorry about that right. no but it gives them also the opportunity to get face time with these people without mm -hmm. yeah um, you know scheduling time but i i intend to contact like personally contact the ones i've spoken with and say hey this thing is coming out are you still interested and in, can you make this the deadline? But yeah, if it's three or four weeks, I, that should be plenty. And this is actually a good time to be doing it because of the fact that we're going into fall and into winter. And this is something that we wouldn't want to really be, we're not going to be breaking ground on until spring, even if for some reason we decide yeah, to we're not gonna pull be. the trigger on it. Oh, it'll be. But, but, right, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. this is a good time because people's people will have more, more time because things are slowing down. Yeah, do you, agreed. Do you have like a specific due date you're thinking? No, not. I, but I don't know. Let's if we look at it. Yeah, if we can get, we got to publish it. That we have to publish a notice and. I can have them. I possibly have them do. What if we have them do? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, November twenty second. That's a month. That's even before. So it's a, it's a full week. I'm just su suggesting November 22nd. It's a Friday. Thanksgiving is on the following Thursday. And then when did you release it then officially? Next week. At the 21st or well. Yeah, that would be almost full. The month. week of, yeah, yeah, sometime next week. I got to get. It. Yeah, 30 days should be plenty of time. Oh, yeah. 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 Longer, yeah. What are the what is the standard for twenty one or what's the standard? It what's depends. Policy? It could be. It's sometimes it's real snug, depending on what the 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 organization wants. It could be as little I think as as little as seven days. But most get anybody done. Most municipalities with this type of especially the the scale that we might be looking at, I would think that thirty days. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Are we all on the same page? I think we're yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It, I know you guys. I still have a. Oh, I still don't. I'm still hold up on the whole. I still like the separation, but majority of it. <laughs> well, you know, Tom, and, and and so here's the thing: is that uh, I I understand your perspective on it, and I get it, and 100. Uh, percent I would say though is that I'm more. That's why I said I'm. Definitely want to see a minimum of three, and I would like to see a lot more than that. The more bids we have come in, the the less of a chance you're going to have for that type of buy instead. Yeah. Not only that, but we'll have more competitive bidding. Well. You got to put it out before we get to bid. Right, yeah, you know what I mean. So, but yeah, okay. Uh, all right, moving on to department updates. Uh, they were submitted in this conversation. Can I bring up a, if there's no anything that's submitted? I sent you an update the other day in response to a, um, the ongoing communication we get from the neighbors at Abbeywood Park, the pickleball courts. Um, they love us. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I the, the the latest that you saw was they want the park board to make a decision, and I think well, I think the park board's been clear the last several months, if not the last year or more, that you're going to delay. A final decision on the Abbeywood Park courts until you see what impact the Tatewood courts have. 
on it. So unless that's changed, I can respond to the latest the latest uh, cease and desist order that we got or that he entitled it, um, letting him know that the park board's opinion hasn't changed, that they're going to wait to see the, the impact of the new courts on the Abbeywood courts. Uh, unfortunately, now know where, where we're at in the season and the season's winding down, I think it was alluded to previously that it, that may not happen until spring, which again, if that's the, the, the way that you can best gauge the use and the impact, then it's next spring. So I know that the village of Lyle sent, uh, I think you've saw that uh, a rather uh, definitive email. And I think we can do the same thing that at least just you're going to table it until like you've been saying, you're going to table it until then. Sister, I, we've been consistent in saying that for the yeah. since we started the project. So I think yeah. that consistency is best measure is the one I've been in. Okay. My position hasn't changed. The only thing I would add is that, I mean, we're not saying that discussions are not going to take place. At that time when we re-review, there's a lot of different options out there still that we can take a look at. It doesn't make any sense for us, though, to make any changes currently. And that's what we've been saying. So right. and we don't know the full impact of the table and sports. And right. Still, and we were, I, yeah, and like like he said, we probably won't know until the spring. And I feel bad. I really do. I feel bad and I'm very empathetic to him. And I hate the fact that he thinks like we're stonewalling him. But uh yeah, it, at the end of the day, this is a community, it's not just one person. And and if, if we can change something to make it better for everybody, we will, but ultimately, you know, our best interest for the whole community, not just one specific person has to be in mind. So I do want to confirm though, I'm 99% sure this is the case, but our our good faith effort to reduce impact, which was moving all the program out of Abbeywood Park, is still the case, and we have no intention of returning any programming to Abbeywood Park at this time. Right? Correct. Now I'm at 100%. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next Saturday, no, we're that's up there. The, our playground surfacing contractor uh, pushed it out until the 29th, I think. Now, October 29th is the date we've been given for surfacing for the playground. We're currently in uh, villages out doing uh, coming out to do inspections. So they did two yesterday, they're coming back to do three more, I believe, tomorrow. And I did a uh, site walkthrough with the architect and the contractor uh, this morning. And there's very little on the punch with it. So we're closed. I would, so we might be able to I would, yeah, I would rather. So to be clear, as soon as the, as soon as we get sign up on the village, the park is going to be open. Um, and the playground, unfortunately, will still be cordoned off until surfacing can get in. But I, the, our level of confidence in this contractor ours unfortunately in honoring a date is uh leaves a lot to be desired so i would rather wait until the surfacing is in and we know and then we can schedule something within the first hopefully the first week or two of november yeah. if that's okay but we again i can't emphasize enough as soon as the village gives us the green light those the nets are going up the gates are being locked open and come one come all sorry Okay, thank you. Seesaw report is in our uh, packet. Uh, 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 off the reports. That's uh, that's me. Uh, I don't know what I've done last time. Oh, uh, yeah, for some That was fun, man. It was great weather. I've never, you know, every other time I've worked in it, I've been either freezing cold or raining or whatever. So I've had a great one tonight. It was you know, good turnout. Um, we're going to back to Africa. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Uh, Superintendent Silver. All of our money. All of our money is FDIC. Okay. Oh, here. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Chase. All of our money is either FDIC insured or fully collateralized, so all of our money is protected. Um, it's nice that the enterprise fund this year versus last year were about eleven $1 hundred dollars higher in revenue, so it's pretty tight, a little less in expenses. So the enterprise fund is doing well. Um, we did get our tax dollars from the county um, in September, so you'll see larger uh, in uh, balance fund balances or profit loss because of that. But that money now needs to get us uh, nine months worth of expenses because 
We don't get tax dollars until until June, so don't be um, overly confident that we got a big profit loss at this point because it needs to cover the rest of this year and the first six five months of next year. So just give you a heads up. You know, it looks nice today, but a lot more expenses and the revenue on the tax side is not going in. Um, well, that is all I have. <laughs> Um, I attended uh, the National Parks and Recreation Conference in Atlanta. Once again, it was a really informative, great new session, lots of learning opportunities. And um, as Dan said, it was a really great way to get to see some, get access to some vendors without having to you know, um, make lunch phone calls or wait for somebody to call back because they all were there and easily accessible in the conference hall. <laughs> no, same. Uh, I was at Scarecrow's scramble with my son. He was, you know, we. I actually ran it like a couple years ago. He dropped this on me like two days before. That. He's like, it's like let's run a five day. I'm like, no, it's not. Bad. <laughs> but but I took him and got. I get love to see all the costumes. It's actually probably one of the funner five days. Yeah, I love that Batman's there every year, and you get all the people out in goofy costumes, and it's a it's a good time. Really for for everybody, young and old, and you know, my son drug me over there and bought a sweatshirt. But it was, it's like those are the things that are really that's that's what we're doing here, right? Is like making sure that the community has fun things to do and get more people involved in it. And, and that's got to be one of my favorite events that happens every year. So awesome, great job, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, I have the. Uh, do you want to talk about you doing? So policy, it wasn't policy, but. It's a, yeah. Oh, it's on the uh, agenda as ethics ethics policy discussion. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, yeah. I don't know. You got a specific kind of one. Yeah. You had kind of a broader conversation. Yeah. So, so I will be spoke briefly. I think you said you would want it like almost to look at them as, I don't know, all the policies, but multiple policies. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I guess I'll say what I thought was, you know, I, I've got a policy that I think is at least that it's worthy of discussion. Um, and the point that we're doing that, we should probably at least as a group maybe look at the entire manual and again, maybe not everyone will be point by point, but we had enough conversations six months ago about like remote attendance. What does that does that does that or does that count? Like well, we have to, well that kind of is dictated that we need to have a form in person to vote. So I'm right dictated by something other than yeah, but I guess it's all of this. Most of these policies were probably written in pre <laughs> 2000. I don't know, but you know, it's 2024, like, especially some of these things around remote attendance, like what does look like worth probably at least reviewing some of those things to see if there's tightening up around some language that we need to. Okay. Well, that's now let me ask you again as far as that goes, if that was going to be one we discussed, um, is it dictated? That's dictated though, right? by Another policy that there needs to be an in person forum in order to vote, correct? Which, uh, what are we talking about? Well, the, the, the about remote we're attendance? About that policy again about people missing board meetings. Mm -hmm. just yeah, okay. so there, are, there may be several policies. Yeah. Like, if, and I kind of come from the standpoint of if we want to talk about that policy, that's great, yeah. but we should use this as an opportunity to say, okay, well, let's look at the broader policy grouping. Let's come up with a short list of, of you know, all the policies there are. What are the ones that we think bear? attention and let's look at this holistically because uh, otherwise i feel like we're going to do this whack-a-mole thing right where at one meeting we're talking about this policy and then something else happens so now we're talking about a different policy like use it as an opportunity just to really refresh everything and i like the way that you put it um, tim that you know it's been a while and some of these policies were written before we had the technology in place and you know some of that and, and we're doing it in aggregate would be the way to go in my opinion yeah, you just want to update the policies as we advance in technology and everything else, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, we typically, I think you typically do, but uh, like the um, employee handbook, for example, the, you, we review that every couple of years and you authorize some changes to that or updates. The board policy manual, we can, I can have have legal give that a cursory review to see what needs to be updated with that. Um, does the policy manual have anything written into it that stipulates how often it needs to be reviewed and reapproved? No. Okay. 
So maybe the starting point with that would be having give it to legal to see what needs to be updated That's fine. with current changes and current yeah. laws. I mean, that's, I mean, I know that's yeah. one of the things that are constantly talking about it. I know one of the things we're planning on doing in 25 is uh, superintendent of HR uh, Welge is going to make some uh, recommended updates to the employee handbook. Well, we don't need to do a comprehensive review because that was done, I think, two years ago. Um, but there have been an, a number of changes in the law that are pretty easy to 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 plug in. So you'll see that sometime next year, too. I, but and I, do I, I can say. Um, I don't know the specific details, but one of the, you know, when I do go to a lot with um, board policy without go to sessions, specifically educational sessions or on the conference, and one of the discussions was, I do believe that this has changed and something that would have to be um, incorporated into our policies. I do believe that we are subject now to sexual harassment training as well as mm -hmm. board, not only staff. Mm -hmm. So that's something. So I do think it would be worth having maybe giving yeah. it to our legal counsel and saying, sure. you know, what are some things that maybe were amiss and not mm -hmm. having incorporated. Sure. So we need two things. That's yeah. like start with legal review and then we have board independent review where then we can bring forward, here's my list of things that I'd like to discuss further. And then right. That's right. So I mean, I think we've got to at least get some of those things. Yeah. There might be things we have to add that are all things we were thinking of anyway. Let's yep. say give ourselves a homework assignment over the next month to so, actually read it. So I don't know how you might like I'm assuming legal will look at it. How long but, but should the board look at it too and then I whatever you suggest? Start, yeah, yeah. And yeah. independently. Let's start looking yeah. at it. Start making your list of things that, that we need to be discussing and get it prepared so that when we're ready, now we're not waiting another month sure. at that point. And it may be a short list. Great. Is it feasible for legal to review and like if there's any huge missing things by oh, next yeah. month? Okay. Oh, oh, I don't know. What do you oh, want? I don't know. There's no reason why we can't do a concurrent. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? We need to put this on the agenda. Are we talking next about month? the board policy manual right now? Yeah. yeah. Correct. Okay. Just at least a discussion next month. Like that. Do, do you, I mean, okay, but I, do you see anything in it now that gives you pause? Other than possibly the interpretation of what it means to be in person, you know what I mean. Well, no, I mean, if we're, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't. It. What what would our what would you want to add? There, there's two. You would like to review the policies that are already in place. Okay. And, well, the, yeah. I'm asking but, but I, want to put out. So, like just the um, any contractor or vendor that donates money to a political cause to that they can't financially benefit from a project. So if there's, you know, in the future, there's like a referendum or anything, I don't want them, uh, um, um, the people that build the recreation center given $5,000 to the campaign fund and then it passes and then we, you know, they get a $20 million contract, stuff like that. The other one um, was like a naming, a, like a name, uh, naming rights or naming of facilities. Um, Policy will be on a go forward basis, not changing anything from the past. And we have mm -hmm. some facilities that are named after uh, individuals. So, I mean, it, it's about go forward basis, not a, a look back. So, I mean, I could send the, I don't know if I was, I should send it to you, and then you could like a little bit more detail and give it to the rest of the board. Or why, why don't you like the name? I, what like, do you, well, it's it's a usually it's a revenue generating thing where people no, will get no, me money no, for me. I, I, I wouldn't have prohibited it at all. It's just like the process of somebody, but yeah, if somebody wanted to, uh, it's the same app stuff, just using it. If they wanted to, if there's a recreation center and they wanted to give us $5 million for native rights, that's good. Don't, I mean, something like that. That's but, right. policy, but I also, if we name it after people, and I know, I think Wheaton, I just read it the other day, like Wheaton's naming a facility after a Former, former employee and yeah. commissioner, yeah. yeah. And then I know when Naperville's director recently left, I think they renamed the, the recreation just the fitness yeah. center, the fitness, the center, fitness center, center portion. They name their garden like, plots think after a. We, we should probably have a policy. There, that, yeah. there's a policy now. Talk about one that's old, because it's, I don't know, it's a, it doesn't matter. But anyway, our policy for naming parks is it something along the lines of it's it's should be geographical and not after a certain a, a, an individual. So geographical means like the street that it's on sure. or the subdivision that it's in. Um, it, there's nothing that says it you can you can't name a certain facility or a part of a 
park or feature after somebody, but that's that's fine. I can show you that policy and we can revisit that. Sure. I mean, that, the, the thing is you could revisit any policy you want and change it, and then the next board can come and do the same thing. Well, that was so, like, my, my point was, was it to like make our list now? It was mm -hmm. like, hey, should we use this as an opportunity yeah. to dig in a little bit and determine are those things for sure. are prudent right now? I don't think we can nitpick every single policy. I think we're going to find the majority of them are just fine the way they are. Yeah. But at least we're doing our due diligence to take extra step and say, sure. all right, we, we dug into this, we looked at everything, we now feel like everything is up to current. I and think, Tom, let me ask but, you about your ethics policy. So you're talking about if they were to donate to the referendum, or so you're talking politics, because I mean, I can tell you is that we've had contractors that have worked for us, um, as a matter of fact, that have donated to our non for profit. And that is pretty standard within the park district world that, you know, if you're, if, you have a corporation that's looking to donate money to a not-for-profit, they're generally going to give it to somebody that they've worked with. So, I mean, that I would caution mm -hmm. you. I mean, like, we, we started Partners for Parks. Uh, Mike Williams from Williams Architects helped us, helped us, you know, get that together, you know, do, do the paperwork. He helped us, you know, get that run. Um, God, the problem is, is that the influence of that could sway, and that's what he's talking about. Sure, I, but if, I, if, if, if my, if I have to, like, it's a non for profit, it's not I, I get it, and there's a million non for profits, and people still, you know, you profit from non for profits, people get paid from non for profits. Uh, and what he's talking about is, it's just, it's political bias. It's, it's, it's not saying that one does it, it's just in general, it's something that should not happen. If, if I'm Williams Architect and I and I'm not. I don't even like. You know, if I'm architect A, <laughs> yeah, or I, if I'm architect A, and I donate money to uh, any type of political group, whether it's a non for profit or not, and it just so happens that I get awarded the contracts, it'll it, you're murking the waters, and there's no reason to do it whatsoever. So you would have the non for profit turn down money then. I would say that the non for profit should be in all of our politics. Especially, 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 especially in the park store. You know, th this is specifically one of the reasons why I wanted to be here. That, that doesn't make any sense. Not, our not for profit isn't in our, in our park board. They're a totally separate entity. They You're, can accept, they, they accept donations. I understand it. Then I don't, no, they don't I don't, them. I don't want money from contractors. I well, think we can't write their policies. That's so that's, well, that's a separate yeah. entity. Yeah, not for us. Yeah. It is. I, I had a, I, I spoke to our attorney about this and to, and his direction or request was to be as specific as possible, because I think that his impression, the way I explained it is you want to, you want to prohibit one of our contractors from making a contribution to a, an outside agency that's forwarding an, an effort to build a rec center. Mm -hmm. But I think it by, and his, what he told me was by you, by doing that, you're violating their, that individual or that that corporation's constitutional right to participate in the political process well, they donate to a fund, but then they, i guess what we could say well then you're not entitled but do, not that's board. that's then that's penalizing that's penalizing somebody or a firm for exercising a, a polit a, 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 a political activity that's not prohibited well you no, no, he's right. He's, he's, All he's right. right. He's right. And what, but what you could do is that you could make sure that before it becomes a vote, you could just do a FOIA request on the not-for-profit and then that'd be the list. Because if FOIA is, no, FOIA doesn't apply to not for profit. Not, uh, sorry, not the, but not-for-profits should have the list to donate money to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the reason why they're not for Right, for profit. right. But I guess where do you stop? The concern is then where do you stop? And I try, I'm. It doesn't matter to me. But do you, I, what if what if somebody's knocking on doors, uh, campaigning for somebody? Or what if they're? I, what if they vote? What if they live in town and they actually vote yes for a referendum? Is that something that's in your head unethical too? I mean, where it's it's not a, pro, a prohibited political activity, even making a financial contribution. It's not prohibited. You may look at it as as unethical, but what? Our attorney told me was that that's you run the risk of violating the, their their constitutional right to participate in the political process. But if you want to, if, I mean, if that's just, if if this is the direction that you want to give, I'm good with it. And then I'll just ask him to to give us a, a, an opinion on it. 
I think it's like Dan saying or is spot on. Like whatever whatever the thought is that comes out of this, before we would institute anything, we would have to get legal approval on oh, yeah. any change anyway. And if anything if we're wanting to implement and have a conflict from a legal standpoint, we're not gonna do it. It won't change. Right. But I think there's certain I under I understand, and I'm not even saying I disagree with you, but it's just I don't know legally. That's why we have legal counsel. I guess I, I, my legally no, we cannot prohibit anybody from contributing or uh, uh, participating in a, a political process. But we do have a, from a governance perspective, we could disqualify. You know, money I think disqualify. based on what then what did they do that we, you would disqualify them? There might be a different it's, report for There's that. totally I mean, it's what I understood that is. And that, that, that the case that, like let's say no but let's get look well, no no being specific like contractor yeah. A donates to any type of non for profit and then they get awarded a job because they were low bidder you can't disqualify them when they're the low bidder and they included everything in the middle you, you can't do that. The the bigger thing is the transparent the mm -hmm. transparency I, issue. I agree with that. You know what I mean? And 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 that's that's more of something that I'm more concerned about because it if contractor A wants to donate to our town to help its benefit because they've done a lot of work for us, like why would we not want to take their money? But at the same instance, I don't think that that's automatically like, hey, you're going to get the next job. You know, that's why we do the process. which is which is why the transparency is the most important part of that process. So I think we're gonna maybe we've officially talked ourselves in circles. <laughs> um, so Dan, you're gonna take the policy and have legal review of it. Yeah, I understand. I think I understand that you that, and maybe it's not a policy, but maybe there's language that can be inserted in that would be an influence or something. But I, I understand. I think, yeah, I think Tom's idea is good. Mm -hmm. We just got to figure out a way to write it in a way that and works that, for us. I just thought of something. This is something that's actually pretty easy and you should be able to check with legal. It's just, is uh, you just request discovery, you know, uh, and most of them we're already doing that with anyway to make sure that they're financially stable, but you could also be like, we want to list the non for profits that you don't need. But what would we what would we use that information for? Would we like see somebody that we don't agree with and say, yeah, you know what, we're gonna go with the next low bidder? No That's you can't there's that, no way. Yeah, there's no way right. doing it. There could be <laughs> bias in when we selected them because they donated to us. Right. Like right. it's because they're providing that I don't disagree. I think I think it bars another conversation. There's some legal elements in this. I think it's stemming from a good place, but we got to we got to dig in a lot deeper before we can make any. I'll yeah. I'll ask what what are the options? I understand what the the point is to 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 avoid the uh, bias and, and and undue influence. I, I get it. I just don't know that there's a that's again that's why we have legal. So I'll convey that and report back. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. No, I don't mean no. This is a, no. I don't disagree that it's it's a it, it muddies the waters. It, it sure, but a lot of legal things tend to you know, and that's the frustration that we all face. But anyway, yeah, I will look into it and report back. Any other conversation? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, we adjourn at 817.